Hello, this is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD again. Uh, I'm gonna show that C sharp, there are some software that require both nested if and else and standalone if for the full functionality. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> other thing, I don't want to give an impression that somebody can learn programming language just by watching YouTube video. This is just to help out. Uh, please register in a course with an instructor. That's the best way to learn programming. Of course, you can try just about everything. Okay, so what software requires both? What software cannot be constructed without both of these? Well, if you go to ice cream store and buy ice cream, there are two things you choose. You choose ice cream cone size and then you choose toppings on it. Similar situation exists if you go to pizza store and you get a pizza size and toppings on that. Or you go to Subway sandwich store that you choose a sandwich size and what you put inside the sandwich like fillings. So a order form for ice cream store, if we make it software driven, would look like this. It will have choices for ice cream sizes, small ones to the large ones and cost increases accordingly. So if you're gonna eat one ice cream, you choose only one size. So in software that is selected by a group of radio buttons, one property of radio buttons, those are mutually exclusive. If you pick one, others cannot be picked. But then you could choose any number of toppings on your ice cream, like you can put marshmallow, hot fuzz, chocolate syrup, fresh banana, or strawberries. And you can choose as many toppings as you want, okay? So we're going to show you how this software runs first, the order form, and then we will show you how to put the radio buttons, check boxes, etc., and what the code is inside the place order button and the reset form button, and how data shows up here. So we'll run it. <coughs> little slow but it will come up. Here's my form. So let's say, notice that this is pre-selected but if I change, choose this one, this got unselected. And if I choose this, this got unselected. And if I choose this again, all others got, the previous one got unselected. But there is not a problem with the toppings. You can put all of these if you like or none of these if you like. You can remove them or so on. So let's look at the math correctly. So my order form should be 150 and order number one, size your order is kitty cone, toppings is marshmallow and please pay 150. If I put a second order, junior cone, and in this one I put everything and I place the order this time order number two was junior scoop I order all the topics marshmallow chocolate syrup fresh banana hot fudge and strawberry and that comes to 550 and I can make an, as many orders as I want and that they will keep showing here if I reset the form uh, radio button should go up here, all the check boxes should be eliminated and this should clear up as well and there you go. We're back to the previous state. So I'm going to show you how to do the radio button and check boxes. Buttons I've shown in previous videos how to do the buttons and this form. So I'm not going to show them again. So let me just add one more form to my project and I'm just only going to show how to draw radio buttons and check boxes and after that I'll show the code inside so just to save time I'm gonna well actually it probably won't take that long anyway so add new item okay and 
I need a form. <coughs> okay. General. That's the name. Send name. I'm a bit surprised that form does not show up here. Okay, so what can I do? Cancel. Maybe I should click here. Yeah, I think I was clicking the wrong place. Yeah, here is Windows Forms. Here's my second form. So I'm just gonna just use it a dummy form to show how to add the radio buttons. So I go to view, toolbar, must be going blind. I can't see things that clearly anymore. Toolbars, I mean toolbox. View toolbox. Okay. I'll see man. Okay, so here my toolbox. So first I put the container for the toolbox and container Here is the container menu startup. Yeah, here is the container. So I click a group box and put that here. And you can change its name. If you click here, the text property can be changed to read uh, ice cream sizes. And then inside this, I can put my radio buttons. One. Once you have one, you can copy and paste that. And so on. And for changing the names, you can change the text property. Everything has a text property. So let's say kitty cone. So you can see the text property got changed. And same way I can take another container, group box, put that here and place check boxes in it. One, two, etc. Okay? And then you can put the buttons. So that's how you do the form. <coughs> um, radio buttons, once they are put into group, group box, they are automatically grouped. You don't have to do anything special to make them mutually exclusive. And same way here, when check boxes are placed in the check box group box, they're grouped. You can ungroup them if you want. In this case, it won't make any difference because these are not mutually exclusive. Okay. So that's how we get these guys and that, and text property gets the prices and everything. Okay, so two things here that how do we pre-select one of these? As soon as form is loaded, we set this one to be selected, and the code where form should be loaded can be gotten by double click on the form itself. So you can see form load method for the form. I say rad kiddie cone dot checked equal to true. That means as soon as form loads, click that one and choose that one. So that's really just one piece of code is needed. Then rest of it, we just 
do inside the placeholder. So this is the major piece of code. And here, I am. I have two groups of code here. This group checks as to which radio button has been selected. So notice RAD kitty cone dot checked. If that is true, I add to that the price for kitty cone, and prices are all here. Kitty, one dollar, junior, two dollar, and so on. And same thing, price for the toppings, marshmallow, 0.5. M means decimal type. M, 1 M means $1 and so on. Hot fudge, 0.6. Chocolate syrup, 0.3 and so on. OK? So using the system of nested if and else, we find which radio button has been picked and we add to the total the price of that type of ice cream. Okay? Prices are all here. So in this case, since we can only select one radio button, only one ice cream size, it makes sense to read nest, use nested if and else. It can be done without nested if and else, but that won't be very efficient. Okay? Then, user may have checked one marshmallow uh, like one topping two three four five or all of them so in that case we need to check each one separately using the standalone if so this structure here does that so if they checked marshmallow if checked property of uh, checkbox chk marshmallow is true that's the name of the button. Then we add price of the marshmallow. If they add chocolate syrup, if that is checked, then we add price of that. So since each one is independent, they can check all of them. Otherwise, if they don't check any of them, then all these will be false. OK? And finally, we print the output string in the receipt text box. And for the reset button, this is the code for reset button. And we leave this one checked upon resetting, but check property of all others set to false. OK? So that's all we have to do here. So main goal of this program was to show you that a software like a order form for ice cream store cannot be built without using both a nested if and else for the sake of efficiency or and individual ifs to make sure that if they order all the toppings, they get all those, or whichever number of toppings they get. That's done by standalone if structures. Okay, I'm almost out of time, so I'll just run it one more time as a concluding remark. So if I have junior cone or senior cone, or actually let's check the most expensive, five dollars, and I want all the toppings. So in this case, the order form is listing everything. And I pay 850. That's my first order. If I reduce the size and still keep all the toppings, that's my second order. And I can do as many orders as I want. And program can be modified to do the grand total also. It's not a problem. And if I want to reset the form for next order, I just click here. So that's our program, uh, which requires both nested if and else and standalone if. For my students, this code will be available. Thank you so much. Bye.